The amethyst geode is still one of the newest and most fascinating structures in Minecraft. This intriguing real-world phenomenon does exist in Minecraft too, but instead of just being there for beauty reasons, it will also give you the crystals you need to craft this brand new crafting recipe. And as a result of that, a lot of players are going to want to find these soon and then realize that they're not really too sure how. Unlike most structures which have a specific biome, the amethyst geode can spawn in any biome, and so it's found everywhere, but also kind of nowhere. And that is where this video comes in, giving you a guide as to how you can find them in your world, if you want to get a spyglass, if you want to get a calibrated skulk sensor, or realistically, in my case, I'd love to claim I want both those things, but I just want to make the pretty blocks and make more areas have these beautiful sounds. How do we do that? Let me show you in today's tutorial. So, hello, I'm BXSoyCat, welcome back to the Update Adventures Let's Play, and in my particular world, I've got a lot of old chunks, but if you load up a world from scratch, you can basically just look anywhere in the world and amethyst geodes will spawn. But that's really useless advice, right? It feels a bit like answering the question of how do you find sugarcane by saying, well, it's easy, you chop down a piece of sugarcane, you plant it, and then more will grow. But like, where do you get the original sugarcane is also where do you get the amethyst geode? Anywhere in the world will work, but there's two really handy pieces of advice. One you might have heard before and one you probably haven't. The first is going to involve finding an ocean in an unexplored part of your world. And if you want some bonus points on the way, what you can do is make yourself some awkward potions by brewing never warts into water bottles and then taking those same awkward potions and putting a single golden carrot in there with both of these. This is going to some be something that will help you out immensely, but again, it's not entirely necessary on a brand new world. You could look for them by yourself. This is just a performance enhancing beverage that why wouldn't you make if you have the resources to do so? Now, the ocean might seem like exactly the wrong place to be exploring for something that is found underground. However, unlike ancient cities, which really like to avoid oceans, uh, the uh, amethyst geodes have no preference for uh, whatever structures they come in or out of, which means by looking along the floor of the ocean, you might find... What is that over there, actually? You might find all sorts of weird things. This is exactly the place where night vision comes in handy, by the way. You don't know if you're looking at a ruined portal, or an amethyst geode, or a shipwreck, or a, you know, an ocean monument, perhaps, unless you can really closely see it. In this case, what I thought was an amethyst geode is just a shipwreck. And just like British sailors looking for somewhere to colonize, all you have to do is hop in a boat, see what you find, claim it's yours, and then boom, problem is solved. I found this very weird pillager outpost over there. Um, um, and I found an ocean monument, but I've yet to find a uh, you know, uh, one of these geodes, because you're not going to find it in the first 30 seconds. But if you want to improve your odds of that happening, then get out of your boat and do something which is a little bit of a later game technique and use the firework rockets and Elytra. I always feel as though you have to be very clear uh, that, like, obviously, in Minecraft, the further in the game you get, the more uh, stuff you're going to acquire like this. But it is very, very handy to have. And if you want to go for the next, next step, combine this with the water breathing potion from earlier. I used, I brewed this with redstone to make it last longer. And now, in no time whatsoever, However, you should be finding yourself a lovely uh, amethyst geode. So something that seems like it should work here, by the way, but absolutely won't, is the spyglass. The spyglass seems like it's the tool for exploring. However, it doesn't actually work very well because uh, the mo more important thing would be turning up your render distance. You can't actually see anything your render distance can't load with this. It just zooms into it a little bit closer, uh, which means that if you want to, for example, see what's far away, turn up the render distance. All you can do with the spyglass is dumb YouTube bits like, oh, I want to make it clearer that I'm looking at blue coral whoa, isn't that nuts? I want to make it clearer. I'm looking at a sandy ocean floor. Wow, that's crazy. Oh, look at this. This is me zooming in on it. Oh, actually, that's a shipwreck. That's fun. And uh, whoa, this is me showing that I don't know how to use the edit function on my uh, you know, my YouTube videos uh, to just zoom into that later. Whoa, isn't this all very believable? You will eventually find an amethyst, although I'm finding just all sorts of other weird things. Like, look at the grass down there, but then also look at these giant holes of water. <laughs> what the heck has happened? And you'll also find a bunch of shipwrecks on your journey, you might want to take those for their treasure maps, and uh, also ocean ruins, which you might want to make notes of for sniffer sort of things, and uh, oh, have we found one? No, we haven't. Seriously, this ocean is absolutely littered with shipwrecks. It's starting to feel like, you know, I should watch out for my boat here. There's something bad happening. Uh, but yeah, you can find all sorts of structures at the bottom of the ocean floor, uh, which is why this method is preferred by a lot of people. Exploring your world by ocean is a great technique that just will happen to occasionally lead you into some Oh, wow. I found every single structure here now. I've even found the pillager outpost before I found a geode. But usually, it's the other way around. The geodes are just everywhere on the ocean floor. Um, like just over here, maybe? Over, over here? 
Wow, look at how the ocean, look at how the spyglass is helping me find these things. I take back what I said about it. So this is a really good problem to have, but I have found every single possible structure under here, which is great. I mean, look at this uh, warm ocean ruins over here. I am now very well set for, oh wow, a second ocean ruin and another one of these boats. This is the the densest uh, boat crashing. I, I, I think I'm in the Bermuda Triangle. I think we just come to that conclusion. There's a lot of stuff down here that looks like it shouldn't be. And so if you wanted to build the city of Atlantis, you could probably do that by exploring oceans till you find a place like this. But you'll spot the amethyst geodes because they will be these giant spherical structures, mostly made of black, but sometimes with the occasional bit of white in there. And uh, yeah, they'll often be quite close to the surface of the ocean itself, but they can be found uh, basically anywhere where they're touching any amount of the ground and not just floating in the air. You'll want to make sure on your way in, you don't break any of these buttons amethyst blocks because these can only be found in a world one time and that is when this structure naturally generates. We can take any of these extra blocks with us and you better believe we're going to. In fact it's even smart to do so on the other sides of these budding amethyst because every single side of this can grow amethyst but again even if you have silk touch, look at this, silk touch pickaxe, when you break one of these it goes forever and the fact that I had to do that just to show you internet, oh it hurts but hopefully you now know not to do it. Use a regular pickaxe, you don't get the block back. Use one of these, you don't get the block back. Oh, it hurts. Use a piston. You still don't get the block back. Don't make me do it to show it to you. Please just trust me. Don't break your bunning amethyst. Instead, uh, try to discover, you know, try to uncover all of their sides and that way you can have as many amethysts grow here as possible. I recommend having an easy access point in and out. It looks like this one actually spawned on its surface opening to the world. So we could have just swam right in here. Um, I recommend making an easy way to point it out and maybe even building uh, some form of handy little monument to let people know that it's nearby. Um, but something like this so you can come back in regularly and pick up the crystals. Again, I'm mostly here not just for the crystals. I think those are great, like sure, we can break this. Don't use Silk Touch to break these, use something with Fortune on because then you'll get eight Amethyst Shards instead of just a few. Um, but yeah, I, I could use my, uh, my my sword even if you really want to. Um, but yeah, by, oh, you can't use your sword if you really want to, at least if it's not fully grown, or you don't get anything back. So wait here, wait for the Amethyst to grow fully, just like, I don't know, you don't pick an apple before it's ripe, right? Is that a phrase? Don't kill the golden goose before it lays its egg. Don't uh, kill the budding amethyst before it grows you a fully grown amethyst. What you can do though is take all the blocks around it. You might even discover some new blocks that are hidden around there. So uh, this is the first method. It's obviously the easy one outside of, you know, just using chunk base. Uh, uh, fun fact, a lot of people just like to use a tool called chunk base. You type in your seed, you can analyze it and find where the stuff is. But I assume you're looking for in-game solutions. And so the second one uh, that isn't just type in your seed, see what's going on, um, is actually to uh, go underground. And going underground is a very loose phrase because amethyst geodes are only found partially underground. You should never find these just floating in the ocean, not touching the ground on all four sides. It just so happens there's a lot of ocean floor and so being able to see where they might touch the ocean on any side is really useful. But if you want to find something else at the same time, it can be much handier to go underground. In fact, this is very useful if you want it to be particularly near where you are. Look at my coordinates right now. My base is not that far from zero zero. So how do I find amethyst geodes that are closer to zero zero? Why? go underground. Before I go though, I actually have found another one of these, uh, you know, geodes nearby here. And this one's been growing for a long time. So let's harvest it. Let's get the full goodies from this. Look at this. It's going to turn in some nice crystals. Oh yeah. Look at this. Going to get, going to get so many crystals from all of this to make so many calibrated skulk sensors. I'm, I'm excited for that. I, I don't think I'm going to realistically use too many of them, but I think they just look such an, like an interesting block. Uh, I feel like I want to have at least one redstone contraption. And ultimately that's the important thing in Minecraft, I think is like, like having the choices to do these fun things when you want to, rather than having to go out and find an ancient city or a geode, uh, work out how to do it soon. In fact, if you want to learn how to find an ancient city, uh, this Saturday I'm doing like a fun series of answering the smaller questions you have about 1.20. Um, but yeah, this is a, a kind of a big one because finding geodes is great when you already have them. Do you, do you like mine? I've got copper rods as a, an orange to connect it all. I thought it was smart when I built it, but maybe maybe a little less so since then. I even have just because like I want to get out of this place sometimes, but you know, I've got to keep the water out. So I made, I think there's some doors over here if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, look at this. And the doors take me into a cave and the cave takes me outside of here, I hope, or maybe to my death. Oh uh, yeah, I think it's that. I think it's to my death. Well, that that was a poor decision, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, no, no, let me back in. Let me back in, please. Okay, there's there's oxygen on these sides of the doors. That is useful to know. Okay, I think this way is the way out. 
There's got to be one. There we go. Through this, and then through that. And now I'm not going to die a horrible drowning death. Fun fact, I think drowning is really high up on my list of ways I would like to not die. Everyone thinks it's so peaceful and smooth, but really it's just holding your breath until you can't anymore. And then, you know, like at some point, you, you gotta just like let it all in and you're slowly just like... Hey, you know, oxygen deprivation isn't fun. If you like to see what it's like to deprive yourself of oxygen, just stop breathing for the rest of this video. Uh, disclaimer, uh, Toy Cat is not liable if you hold your breath. Um, and please don't do it because I need more subscribers. Speaking of subscribers, a lot of my subscribers will know I started my world before the Caves and Cliffs update, and in fact, a lot of you might have done exactly the same. And so, what is the deal with this exact situation? How can you find Amethyst Geodes somewhere close to your base here? The answer is, you still always can. When they raised the height limit, it was actually after Amethyst Geodes came out, the Caves and Cliffs update, the same one if you want to be precise, um, but this means that there is not a single world in existence which which doesn't have Amethyst Geodes below Y0. Above Y0, I have these old ass 1.8 ravines, and I have uh, this uh, biome which doesn't exist in current generation anymore, uh, because that's always going to stay that way. But below Y0, you always find Amethyst Geodes. And so instead of having to travel hundreds or thousands of blocks for unexplored chunks, instead, you just have to go down and then find Y0, and specifically mine below it. Look at this wonderful little tunnel I have right here. Instead of mining straight forwards, like I've done before. Instead, I could just jump straight down. In fact, yeah, let's turn this into a little mine downwards. And as soon as you find deep slate, and in fact, really, it's as soon as your coordinate on the Y, the middle one of the three, if you're playing uh, Bedrock and it's on screen, um, when your Y coordinate is below zero, you found new chunks. And so I can find moss blocks. So this is actually incredible. I was not expecting to jump straight into a cave. But let's explore it, I guess, because here's the wonderful thing about Amethyst Geodes, which um, other structures do not always follow. Amethyst Geodes will always just overwrite anything they run into. This leads to the hilarious situation where they might overwrite your end portal, so sorry in advance if that happens to you, but at least I guess you can craft a, a spyglass to help you find another one. Um, but yeah, finding, uh, you know, uh, finding out uh, if there is an Amethyst Geode is relatively easy because when you look around caves, they will just spawn there connected to the rest of it. And so this cave was relatively tiny. I think my odds weren't ever going to be great, but if you just start exploring enough caves, and especially the bigger caves you find, and as long as it's below Y0, you are guaranteed to find uh, an Amethyst Geode eventually. And fun fact, if you have a world that is generated post-2021, you can look above Y0 too. It's just, you know, don't you want to go below Y0? Aren't the caves nice down here? So let's get out of here again. So here's me trying the exact same thing again. I've ran into some dirt, and not too much else. Finding caves is so much of like, you know, a, a feeling more than a science. You can just dig around for them forever. You can branch mine for diamonds. You can do whatever else it is you want to do down here. I would recommend looking for an ancient city in particular. Um, you know, that's I, I think if you want a calibrated skulk sensor, it makes sense to look for the ancient city, which you can vaguely do by mining at certain layers, as opposed to just doing nothing. But if you dig around long enough, then maybe you'll find a cave. And honestly, it's kind of fun. The old worlds have such weird uh, cave uh, base things, but yeah, we can look around these caves and you can look for deep slate lapis or zombies, probably not those, or you can look around for glow berries, which I always think are fun, uh, lily pads, I think these spore blossoms, if we can find, oh, there we go, spore blossoms are a rare item that, you know, you might as well try and collect, uh, picking up other things that you want to go for in Minecraft is an important thing, if you want fun cave tasks, then, you know, there are all sorts of ones you can go for that I love to do, uh, here on this channel, uh, because mining is such a fun part of Minecraft. In fact, it's such an important part of Minecraft, they literally named half the game after it, and the other half is apparently about crafting, but, you know, I don't know if that's so true. Have you seen, you seen what the crafting in this game looks like? You've seen what it takes to craft a boat? Where does the shovel go? You clearly have two shovel-looking things, and then on Java, you don't even need that. Why, why does the crafting recipe be like that, huh? But yeah, more seriously, I really do like the exploration in this game and that comes from mining. Um, like, uh, you know, I, I think they even do a better job every single update. Tales and Trails is all about making the game better for exploration with the armor trims and whatnot, uh, but it's also really wonderful uh, in bringing back exploration to old structures. So the ancient city came out in 1.19, there's new reasons to go there. Calibrated Skulk Sensor. Also, the Amethyst Geode came out in 1.17 or 1.18, and there's a new reason to go there. That. It's the calibrate, uh, you know, that calibrate skulk sensor brings both of these two very different updates together. And I think this is clever game design on Mojang's behalf. I like this cave, by the way. I'm feeling good about it. It's really, really big uh, in basically every dimension. And uh, if we're lucky, we might just be able to spot the trademark uh, secret, which is 
any amount of uh, polished base salt and calcite. Just if you look for black and white blocks that look out of place, you'll probably find it in the right place. Oh, that rhymed. I mean, technically, this is a block that's out of place, but I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's non amethyst geode, but I'll take it. Uh, one of the wonderful things you'll find if you look below Y0 and at Diamond Lair is maybe some of these very things. Oh, wow, it's more diamonds. You know, almost left some uh, free there. Something I think I want to do soon, because, you know, the, uh, the Let's Play is becoming. Oh, wait. Is that? No, that's just tough. Um, something I want to do more of soon, because obviously I, I want to do some more of the fundamental tutorials. People getting back into Minecraft or starting a new world and or, you know, like uh, maybe miss something from a few years ago. It sometimes feels like, yeah, why would you learn about Amethyst Geodes? They came out about years ago, Toy Cat. But it's like, well, now after years, it's changed and now we know the new best ways after uh, years of experimentation. And I think the same is true for lots of Minecraft stuff that people would like to know about. So I want to go in a tutorial direction, but I also want to take advantage of, say, diamonds and do another one of the whole, like, let's gather as many diamonds as we can just to have one big destruction day. Also, whoa, look at the size of this cave. It is immense. It is, like, too big. I don't think I'm ever going to find the end of this, which is great because if you want to find, uh, you know, like a structure which generates randomly in caves, this is a great place to do it. Whoa, more diamonds. This is great. You know, I was just talking about how I needed more of these because I want to do a big diamond break uh, time. Honestly, I mean, you know, 1.20 is a great time to do a little bit of diamond collection. Everyone needs more of them than they have right now. Okay, you know, what? this video has changed from uh, how to find amethyst geodes to go dig for diamonds until you find them. But for real, that's a valid strategy because who doesn't want 14 deep slate diamond? It's easier to find than an amethyst geode if you know what you're doing, uh, apparently. Oh, whoa, never mind. I changed my mind. <laughs> Change my mind. I guess they're equally easy to find. That's an amethyst geo. It's not always so easy to see. Sometimes it's a lot easier. I've had some very ridiculously obvious ones. Um, and sometimes it's just a few blocks you can peek at for a little corner. But when you find the white and the black blocks together, uh, you know, true equality uh, in Minecraft, uh, you found yourself uh, this beautiful, beautiful structure, which, as you can see, it's been apparently growing without my knowledge. And the exact same thing is going to apply here. We're going to want to uh, remove the little corners here, make the uh, the bud, uh, the well, that grew so quickly. Uh, make those blocks uh, visible so that they can grow, uh, because this is much closer to my base, and so it's much more likely to be actually usable. I'm also going to pick up some jingly jangly amethyst geo blocks. And honestly, this is going to be great. By the way, if you don't know the value of having one of these close to your base versus far away, um, basically things in Minecraft only simulate when they're nearby you. So uh, the Amethyst Geode that I showed you earlier today, uh, sure it had quite a few crystals that had grown. Uh, however, that was crystals that had grown in six months. Whereas if I just take a quick six minute lunch break, actually you know, what? let's say more like 16 minute lunch break, which I'll do slightly AFK just over here behind my deep slate diamonds. Let me show you what happens when I come out. Four to six weeks later. Yep, definitely 16 minutes and not an hour and 16 minutes have passed. And whoa, look at that. They're all fully grown. Besides there, because one grew over there instead. Look how many amethyst crystals I've just gotten. Except here's something interesting. Now that you've found an amethyst geode somewhere near your base, I think I'm about... 200 blocks away, which isn't great, but it's not terrible. Here's the next thing you're going to want to do, especially if you're at Y minus 30, you have to do something that's a bit painful, but will save you a lot of pain in the future and plan a space to get in and out of this. I think I'll actually make it in the cave outside, but if you want to be fancy, you can put it right into the middle here. In fact, why don't we just do that? This block right here is 101 minus 31 to 18. That is where my water will eventually flow. And then right over here at 96 minus 218, I'm going to have a way to get immediately up. There's a couple of ways you can get up quickly in Minecraft. The ladder is an option. You can use nether portals to be really quirky. Uh, I, I love the way they can link sometimes. Uh, but instead, I'm going to use some soul sand water happening over here. I'll need some door or something to stop that flowing all the way up there. And I'll have just a single bucket of water down here so that I can... Wait, have I got one of those? Yes, I have. Uh, so that I can easily jump in and out of this. So I'm going to remove the top block there. Really make sure I've got these coordinates right. And then I'm going to do the thing that everyone says you shouldn't in Minecraft. And dig straight down from the surface. Except these aren't the same coordinates. It seems as though I've forgotten those coordinates. Just like how this wandering trader has forgotten how to climb a mountain. He seems to think that two llamas will help him. I don't know if that's going to go so well. Uh, I need to find the coordinates. And I lost them earlier. And fortunately for me, I happen to be a YouTuber. 
YouTuber, I can look at my footage, but if you're not in the situation of recording your gameplay, if you're not an incredibly mediocre uh, British Minecraft YouTuber, then you can use the other technique that people like me can use, which is to simply write your coordinates in the chat whenever doing anything important. It looks like it's 101 to 18, so that would be over here at 218, and 101 is over here. I can dig down from exactly these coordinates now and know that I'll end up in that amethyst geode or a puddle of lava. And you know what? What people always recommend doing is not having a ton of undying and just kind of going into this with no plan. It always goes well besides the very few times in which it doesn't. I guess I should eat uh, in, in the meantime. But yeah, digging straight down uh, is a really scary sounding idea. But I think in reality, you can just do it and, you know, when when will this go poorly for you? Basically never, <laughs> I say, uh, before things maybe go poorly. But um, yeah, this is, oh wow, into a ravine too. This is going to be a really fun journey down, actually. So, uh, I'm actually quite lucky in that this generated below some blocks that I've already been to and some, you know, it's, it's going to be an interesting uh, ride on the way down. I'd say you mostly shouldn't expect that. You mostly should just expect for your way down to be pure nothingness. But in my case, I now know it's going to be safe all the way to the bottom because this is, there we go, this is my water at the bottom of that geode. This is the easiest way to get down in Minecraft. You just fall down in the hole as long as you don't move around. You're not going to die. It's wonderful. Uh, however, uh, with regards to getting back up, you need to do something a little different. So, uh, yeah, the fastest way up that I always recommend, it's been forever since I've done this, to be totally honest with you, is you put some soil down and then some water, and now the water pushes you up. And then as soon as you can put, I guess we'll just put a block on this side over here. So, um, yeah, this this is something really handy, but this will only, oh, we, we need some form of light. Uh, should I use, like, a lit up block? You know, do you need to see right now? I don't think so. However, this exact same thing can be applied to multiple blocks of water if they're all source blocks. This is actually a pretty crucial if. Um, it, as you can see right here, the water that is currently pushing down does nothing with the soul sand. This is useful if you want to play with people's expectations, but this means we're going to need them all to be source blocks, right? We want all of this to be uh, source water. And so, I ag again, this is a, a weird way of doing things that you can totally take advantage of. Place some water down and then place some kelp. This probably should have placed the water down a block further down. Okay, so let's place the water down. Let's remove the soul sand and let's place a dirt there and a kelp at the bottom. Now we're going to place some bone meal and when we grow the kelp it turns anything that it, it goes through straight into source blocks of water. Although this is as tall as it seems to want to go. Is there a reason for that? Is free high the max limit for kelp? Or is it just surrounded by too many non-source blocks? Anyway, now what will happen is if we remove these blocks, there will be source blocks around the kelp, which means that if we also remove the kelp, which we'll just do right now to show an example, um, now these are all source blocks right here, which means we can place our soul sand down here in the middle, and now instead of one block high worth of uh, bubbles, we get all the way up to here, which is weird to have source blocks go into not source blocks. But um, yeah, if we can get out of here, which I can't, this is actually going to drown me. Jesus, oh god. <laughs> okay, so... As you can see, the idea here is solid. We can do that all the way up as an easy way out of here, or we could deliberately make it hard for ourselves to get out of here. It's entirely my decision. Uh, you can make bad choices however you like in Minecraft, such is the beautiful thing about living in a democracy or something like that. Anyway, as you can see, we've now designed the thing. We could probably do the last touches on making sure we get the last of these blocks properly uncovered. So like block over there, for example, block over here. Uh, but now I can get my hands freely on all sorts of amethyst blocks, which will be really useful. Finding one of these in your world is a must do. Um, I, I would say uh, amethyst blocks are one of those blocks they clearly designed with future uses in mind. And I love that there is someone on the Minecraft team making sure they come back to it, which is why uh, you want to make sure you have something like this ready in your world. But the obvious question is how nearby should be nearby? I mean, how close to your base can you get one of these? What's the optimal distance? And the simple answer to that question is within your simulation distance. And in case you don't know what that is, because I, I'll be honest with you, most Minecraft players aren't, de uh, aren't bothered with the details of what's going on in the settings menu, they like to play Minecraft. That's my truth too. I mean, I you know, I would love to tell you all this stuff is super important as a player. All this stuff is important to understanding how certain mechanics work. But if I was a basic Minecraft player, I'd just be like, yeah, I like the jingly jangly blocks. Thank you for telling me how to find them. 
But let's be honest, how close do I want the jingly jangly blocks to my base toy cat? And here's the answer to that question. So this right here is my amethyst geode. It is currently over 100 blocks below me, but it is still being simulated because Minecraft doesn't care how vertically far away from something you are. It only cares how horizontally far away you are. So right now, as far as the game is concerned, I am zero blocks away from my amethyst geode. And to mark that, I think we'll put a couple blocks of amethyst here. Although actually, to make this easier to get into, I think I'll also tunnel into the mountain and leave an amethyst geode over there. Because again, walking all the way up a mountain just to jump down a hole seems kind of silly when instead what I could just do is over here, uh, dig a tunnel through the mountain, which leads me there instead. Place a couple amethyst geodes in the wall so I know which direction to go. In fact, actually, I can go a step further, right? I could place like uh, four of these down there and then I could remove just a few blocks in the wall so that it's very clear I am pointing downwards. <laughs> is this over the top? Some would say yes, but some might lose their geodes. So now if I want to work out the distance from here, I can just use my coordinates. Right now my coordinates say 218 on the minus. So then this right here is 30 blocks away and the amethyst geode will still grow just great. This means that in my case, I'm really lucky my bamboo auto farm will still run because it's right next door while this is running nearby. See how finding the uh, geode first is actually really handy because you can use that as a, uh, you know, a baseline to put other things which can go anywhere in your world. You can grow bamboo anywhere, but you can only grow geode where the geodes happen. So that's really handy. But let's go to my flatland where everything is wonderfully clear and we can get a better sense of distances to help you explain, you know, to help understand exactly how far you can be from anything in your Minecraft world while it still simulates. This is actually governed by something called your simulation distance, but on Minecraft Bedrock, the minimum this goes to is 64. This means no matter what device you're running on, you can always have something as far away as that sign right there, the one that looks like it says B4 because because I made it out of very little blocks of amethyst. Uh, this is block zero, that is block 64. Anything beyond that, you can't see. Notice how there's no mobs over there. We can't see them, they're not rendering. There's no amethyst geodes growing because they're all the way over there. Uh, if you're playing on a realms or a low end device, this is your actual simulation distance. If you're playing on a, uh, you know, if you're playing on a, a slightly more powerful uh, PC, or maybe you've turned up your simulation distance to eight chunks, then where you see that little strip of amethyst in the distance of my render distance, I'm running on a realms right now, then so that's all you can see, uh, is that right there. And then if you're running on the most powerful device Minecraft allows, with the highest simulation distance Minecraft allows, the very edge of that grass is your max of 12 chunks of simulation distance. If you're playing Java, your results will vary because you have much further uh, options and much smaller options. But on Bedrock, as long as something's between you and that 64, in either direction, it would work the same this way too, or that way, or all the way into the forest over there, then it will be simulating, which is why having an amethyst geode somewhere within 64 blocks of where you spend a lot of time, it doesn't need to be your base, but let's be honest, in Minecraft, the one thing everyone makes is some form of base, a base that might contain a cobblestone generator, a sugarcane farm, a boat ladder, a bee farm, whatever it is you keep nearby, whatever it is that you go back to a lot, having an amethyst geode be below that is going to be handy, because whenever you want blocks of amethyst, you'll find that it's fully replenished or fully plenished, I guess. Why does no one ever use the word plenished without the re at the start of it? Anyway, that is an important thing uh, that maybe you need to know. If you're curious as to what I've been up to this week besides dreaming of amethyst, uh, honestly, it's been looking around my Minecraft world and wondering uh, what big improvements do I need to make? I like the idea of infrastructure. I like making these big improvements. And so uh, making the small things of saying like, actually, wouldn't it be great to have some amethyst blocks here? Except also, you know, I've got some, uh, I've got some moss right here. Why don't I use that too? Making these small Small improvements day by day is something I like to do. I had a real obsession with uh, Breath of the Wild. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, with Tears of the Kingdom, which is like kind of a Breath of the Wild 2. Um, I, I have a real obsession with that game, and it's been really, really great. I think I finally weaned myself off it, uh, and I've been doing a little bit of VR this week too. Uh, it's it's kind of nice. Like I um, some some days. Uh, you know, like, uh, as, as someone who plays a lot of Minecraft, some days other games just aren't really interesting me at all. And as someone who, like, you know, when I was, like, super young, I'd call myself, you know, a gamer or whatever, it feels like, oh, no, you're losing something in there. And although the word gamer has so many connotations now that you probably don't want to be associated with, um, the truth is, is, like, you know, as someone who plays a lot of game and plays a lot of Minecraft, it's nice when you're doing both 
as opposed to Minecraft being the one game. Because I like Minecraft. If I was ever taking one game to a desert island, this would be the one. But I've been having a real good week uh, with that and everything else I've been up to. Uh, I've been eating some good food, which is always a sign of pure happiness. It's it's a real problem when, like, eating... Do, you know, eating food that's bad for me makes me feel happy, right? But does it make me feel happy in the long run? That's a... Uh, uh, more philo philosophical question, which I'll have to wait until uh, the live stream is later this week. And indeed, uh, you know, like, uh, er the the next Let's Play to dive into. Because I do intend to do a lot of dipping back and forth between this format and that format. But yeah, the Let's Play world remains. Everyone talks about new seasons and new whatevers of their uh, worlds. But this is an 11-year-old world that I intend to keep that way. And I hope you all enjoyed this episode of the Let's Play. Because I'll see you in the next one, by the way. Goodbye. Oh, and if you want more tutorials, check out my other Let's Plays and also the big 1.20 questions answered coming this Saturday. Goodbye.